Thank you. Uh, I literally just got off the plane, so um, I think I've come to the right place, yeah? This is Amsterdam, yeah? Um, yeah, sorry to keep you. No, I was just thought I'd share a story, because what... Uh, so these are kind of trip stories, yeah? Okay, so uh, I guess what I can share that's quite unusual are clinical trip stories, um, being administered psychedelic drugs under clinical circumstances legally, mostly by that man over there, Robin. Um, so uh, over the last 10 years, uh, I've been legally administered ketamine, LSD, MDMA, and psilocybin in various different contexts. Um, and all of them have been really fascinating. Um, Ketamine one was in South London at uh, the Maudsley Hospital. The most interesting thing about that was it took me four hours to find the tube station, which is literally just outside the hospital. They kind of took the infusion out, dumped me on the street, and I walked around for a long time talking to the railings before I got on the tube. So um, advice to anyone conducting ketamine studies, take your subject to the tube, because um, they will get lost. Um, the most fascinating thing about the clinical LSD um, that I've received intravenously is um, just how interesting IV LSD is and how similar it is to oral LSD. Um, intravenous psilocybin is more like DMT. You're kind of shot out of a cannon. You're at baseline and then three minutes later you're tripping as hard as you can imagine. But intravenous LSD is weird because it's as if you're taking it orally. So you get the injection into the vein but it's still about 30, 45 minutes before you slowly start to feel stuff, which kind of is interesting about LSD because you hear of people taking in all sorts of weird, peculiar ways through the eyelids and all this sort of thing. I think it behaves pretty much the same however you take it because it's not the passage into the bloodstream that makes the difference. It's the passage into the brain and the action in the, in the um, receptors. But um, the most interesting story really is about psilocybin. So it's a, uh, it's a neuroimaging study in Cardiff with uh, Robin running that, Robin Carhart Harris. And um, if there's one place you really don't want to take a psychedelic drug, it's in an MRI scanner. So, you know, we like to take psychedelic drugs in nature, in nice relaxed surroundings with cool music and friends and cups of tea and opportunities to relax and chill out. So imagine taking a very high dose psychedelic intravenously, lying on a metal table, strapped down with a vein in your arm and a plastic tube up your nose, locked inside a metal container just above your head for an hour, whilst the most unbearable sound is going on around you. So if you've ever been in an MRI scanner, it, um, it really does make Psytrance sound very musical indeed. It's sort of for about an hour, and you can't get out, and you're strapped in like this, and all you hear is a little voice, Robin, saying, hi, Ben, the infusion's going in now. And you're like, okay. And so there I am lying in the scanner, and no doubt I had all sorts of interesting cognitive tasks to carry out on the, on the little keypad. I think I sort of pressed the right buttons, but I have no idea. Because the highest dose one was what, what I really experienced was just a complete ego dissolution. So the falling away of the layers. And it was really weird because I was trying to hold on to who I was and where I was. But the layers fall off with the most superficial first until you get right down to the core. So the first layer is, I'm lying there, right, well, I'm taking part in a psychology experiment, in a pharmacology experiment, and I'm in Cardiff. Okay, I'm not, I don't know why I'm here, but I know I'm in Cardiff. All right, I'm not sure where I am, but I am at some kind of facility. Okay, I'm not quite sure what this is. It's some kind of a metal tube, but I'm not sure what that means, but I'm pretty safe. I know I'm Ben. I know I'm a father, I know I'm a husband, and I know I'm a doctor. So all of those things, you know, holding on to my identity. And then um, I'm not sure if I am a man or what I am now, um, but at least I know my name is Ben. Oh no, I'm not sure who I am. What is the name Ben and what is it to be a person? But at least I have a physical body and I can feel myself here in this thing. Oh dear, the physical body has gone. And so, 
I can no longer remember who I am, where I am, what I am, what am even is, but at least I've got some sense of connectivity with um, physical nature, and then that falls away, and that's gone, and now I'm no longer a person with a name or a job or a role or a gender or where I am or who I am. I'm just simply this notion, a notion, just an idea, just a stream of energy just floating with no particular direction at all. And it was the most frightening experience of my life. I was absolutely terrified. I was very experienced with psychedelics, but this was awe-inspiringly frightening. I felt like everything that I, need, I knew to hang on me as my identity had been stripped away, and there was nothing left. I had no way of defining myself other than as a, a light, because that's all there was, a white light. And it was terrifying. And then I was suddenly struck with this realization that if I have no body or no name or no place or nothing, then I am dead, and therefore I have nothing to fear. And if I'm dead and gone, then there is no threat. So it was a complete ego loss death experience. And what really struck me as a clinician was, wow, this is really powerful. Because the patients I work with define themselves by the labels they carry. And those labels are really negative. I am useless, I'm a piece of shit, I'm a waste of space, I'm unlovable, I'm unloved, I'm a nothing, I'm a nobody. These are the labels that my psychiatric patients carry. And so I was struck with what an amazing tool with an ability to reprogram and reboot a person from the very core identity onwards and then rebuild them on the way out. So then when I came out of the scanner, the layers started to come back and I started to remember who I was and where I was and what my name was and what my role was, and I was filled with the most tremendous sense of bliss and personal achievement and almost pious sense of survival that I'd done it and I was back, but I was back slightly different having been all the way down to the tiniest molecule and come all the way back to this person with all my nice comfortable labels to hang on myself. Um, so that kind of really high dose psychedelic experience there's something about the letting go of those labels that's so powerful. And I'll never forget that one. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you.